Some hearing care professionals still aren't verifying if they're programming your hearing aids correctly. And other hearing care professionals are using old-fashioned techniques of hearing aid verification that are outdated at best. So in this video, I'm talking about the wrong way to program hearing aids and what you should do instead. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Proper programming is critical to ensure that you realize the full potential of whatever hearing aids that you have. I often say that a cheap hearing aid programmed well is better than an expensive hearing aid programmed poorly. But in order to ensure that your hearing aids are programmed properly to your hearing loss prescription, you need to have the hearing aid programming verified. And there are still a lot of hearing care professionals out there who are using an outdated form of hearing aid verification called functional gain testing. Basically what functional gain testing is, is that a hearing care professional will fit you with hearing aids, program those hearing aids, take you into a sound booth with a loudspeaker and play beeps from that loudspeaker, very similar to the beeps that you would hear during your initial hearing test. The concept is, is that with the hearing aids, you should be able to hear those beeps at a much softer level, illustrating that you're receiving functional benefit from those hearing aids. Take a look at this hearing test. The O's on this hearing test indicate the softest beep that this person can hear at each frequency tested. The lower these O's are on the graph, the worse their hearing is. If the person being tested while wearing hearing aids could hear these same beeps at a lower level as illustrated by the S's on the graph, it would indicate that the hearing aids are providing adequate amplification for the patient. This type of verification is only useful to determine the softest sound that a patient can hear while wearing hearing aids. However, this does not mean that the hearing aids are programmed correctly for four main reasons. First, unless you're talking to R2-D2, you probably don't care how well your hearing beeps. It would be much more useful to verify how well you're hearing speech instead. Second, functional gain testing doesn't provide a realistic understanding of how well you'll understand speech in real world situations. When a hearing care provider is programming hearing aids for you, they're programming them at different input levels. So if you were to look at soft input levels at 55 decibels, average level inputs at 65 decibels and loud inputs at 75 or 80 decibels, you're trying to program the hearing aids to provide different levels of amplification for each one of those inputs to make sure that all of those sounds are comfortably audible for you. When you're just testing these beep sounds that are significantly softer than 55 decibels, it really has no real world value. Third, it doesn't help with precision programming of hearing aids. Best case scenario, you're able to test 11 different frequencies using functional gain testing. However, some of the better hearing aids have 20 different frequencies that you can very specifically adjust for to ensure that you're meeting your hearing loss prescription at each and every single one of those frequency bands. On top of that, functional gain testing is usually done in five decibel increments, whereas in hearing aid programming software, you can make adjustments in one decibel increments. And fourth, you may not even get accurate readings doing functional gain. There are different hearing aid features such as compression that can have an impact on your functional gain scores. It is well documented that compression, depending on where your compression knee point is, that it can have an impact on what the readings are in the high frequency range for individuals who have a significant high frequency hearing loss, which is a lot of people. All that being said, verifying hearing aid fitting using functional gain testing is definitely better than not verifying your fitting at all. But it would be even better to verify your hearing aid programming using real ear measurement. Real ear measurement is the gold standard in programming hearing aids. Unless you use real ear measurement, you really have no idea if your hearing aids are programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription. Now, if you wanna learn more about real ear measurement and why it's so critical to determine your success with hearing treatment, then I highly recommend that you watch my video that I will link in the card up here and in the description below. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked it, please share it. And if you wanna see other videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.